Ooh. I think, I think, I think we're live. Hey guys. Welcome, welcome. My name's Luke. Haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, we're gonna be today doing a couple things. We're gonna be checking out, ooh, I might have to get a coffee over there. We're gonna be checking out uh, the New York Public Library in Manhattan, which is a very cool. And then we're going to be going to a place I've never been, which is apparently a jungle in the middle of the city. Interesting. So we're gonna do that. I just realized there's a half of coffee here and I might get one of those. We're in what's called Bryant Park. By the way, guys, Please, if you haven't already yet, hit the like button so that people, uh, so that people can also find it. And we're gonna we're gonna be walking around the city a bit, looking at some different things. I'm here to answer your questions today. So if you have questions about whatever English, this is an English learning channel, so that would be good. Or other things, then let me know. Kind of cold. Um, Hello, Xiao Li. We've got regular coffee, Americano. Uh, I might get an Americano. A large Americano. Yeah, that's what I'm going to get. The hot beverage is there. Americano is $3.49 for a large. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm going to get. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Sorry I started a little late today. Usually I start earlier. I know. So this is Bryant Park. If you've never heard of it, it is right behind the New York Public Library, which is there. You can see there, that's where we're going later, which is the Chrysler Building. And then uh, during the summertime, they do actually, they do on yoga day, there will be thousands of people here doing yoga. Right now, I think they're doing ice skating. You can see that little car going back and forth there? That is called a, uh, a, what is that called? It's called a, ah, it's, I'm losing it. It's Zip, 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 B Bazzoni, Zaboni, Zabroni, Badoni, uh, Zambino, for something like that. I don't know. Zambino, Zamb Zamboni, Zamboni. Thanks, okay, yeah. All right. Sure, no problem. Nice little place. It's pretty warm in there. Cool. Uh, could I get, please, a large Americano? That's it. You know what I should do is hit. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not evil like that. <laughs> I. But it, it would be funny. She would learn. That's for sure. You said large. Large Americano. No milk, correct? No milk. Can I use Apple Pay? Unfortunately, I don't have Apple Pay. Uh, okay. Charge you for small, right? Okay. So, I don't know if you guys saw what happened there. The girl, the girl who was in line, she, after, you, after you pay, you sign your name, and then uh, you have to click on a tip if you want to leave a tip or not leave a tip. So you can choose the 18% tip or 20% tip or no tip. And for a coffee shop, honestly, you don't need to leave a tip. You can, but you don't have to leave a tip. It's not. It's not like going to a restaurant where you have to leave a tip, and if you don't, you're a bad person. It's more like, it's more like, yeah, if you want to, right? So she forgot to click the complete payment thing, and so he asked me to click on that, uh, and I could have changed her tip amount, but I didn't. So I'm a good person. And it says, how are things, Luke? Things are good. It's nice and chilly, but it's a nice day here in the city. Uh, we're gonna be going on a bit of an adventure, so uh, 
hold on for that. First, I gotta, I, I need a coffee. That's the most important thing. Uh, I, I haven't had a coffee yet today. So, I'm getting a coffee. I'm waiting for my coffee. And uh, then we're gonna get started on our grand adventure. So you pay over there, order over there, and then you pick up here. That's how it works. You guys are welcome to Google where I am if you like. I mean, this is uh, kind of the mid midtown Manhattan. Uh, it's 42nd Street and 5th Avenue? 6th Avenue, 42nd Street and 6th Avenue, Bryant Park. When am I going to Brazil? I'd like to go someday. I've only, I've only been once to South America. I went to Colombia and I enjoyed it. But um, yeah, yeah, I'd like to go. I just, it's not in my plans immediately. So yeah, if you guys don't mind, hit, hit the like button and don't forget to um, don't forget to uh, come up with your questions. I mean, I'm kind of here to answer English questions or culture questions or whatever, but I'm also here just to sort of go for a walk and have you join me. Right over there. Is it noisy? Is my microphone not What is the noisy sound, Anderson? Is it coming from this microphone? Yeah. Thank you. You too. That I think is important, regardless of your okay, so politics. Guys, is my, is my microphone um, connected correctly? Uh, because it shouldn't be that noisy in the background. Because I have, I have this microphone. Is it coming from this mic? Is this the mic that's working when I, when I brush against it? Is it coming from that? Or is it, is it coming from my phone? Because I want to make sure that it's, uh, I want to make sure that it's, you know, good sound. Is the sound quality okay? Is that simple? Hey, ow, ooh, ah, ah, just splashed some on my hand. Hi, Lolly Lolly. Lolly Lolly, can you do a sound check? Is my sound okay? Is it clear? Or is it noisier than usual? I just want to make sure that my microphone is working, you know? It shouldn't be that noisy because this microphone should block out, you know, a lot of the background, a lot of the background noise. Let me just do a uh, do a quick check here. I'm gonna unplug, and then I'm gonna plug in again. If I blow against this, then it should, you should hear a pop sound. Ready? You should hear a loud hissing sound. Then you know it's this microphone. Otherwise, it means it's coming from my phone or there's some other problem. Okay. Better now. Okay, good. Good. Okay, let me clean my hand off because I just burned myself on this coffee. Hello, Dominican Republic. Oh, it's Gertie. Hello, Gertie. Hold on, I'm just fixing my camera, guys, and then we're going to leave. We're gonna go somewhere. We're gonna go on a grand adventure. But you gotta just give me a second to straighten my camera here. All right. Here we go. Off we go. All right, people are skating again. I'm gonna see if I can get next to the skating rink. Uh, yeah, I know, the music sucks. It's music that's playing in public because apparently, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get to it. I don't know if you guys can see, but there is a there is a uh, ice rink. No, it's not a cell phone. My cell phone is not playing music. No, there is an ice skating rink here in Bryant Park behind the New York Public Library, and people are ice skating, and they like to live, apparently they like to play music because it's better for ice skating. Apparently, I don't know. Let's just take a look at it, though. You can see. You can see it. The speaker is right there. See, that's where it's, the sound is coming from, right there. Okay, turn this around. Ice cream. There you go. 
see the ice is kind of melting in there. Uh, because it's not that cold. Right? It's not very cold. It's not super cold. All right, we're gonna get out of here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the uh, library, the New York Public Library, which is very famous and very cool. Ooh, waffles. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten a single thing today. It's almost 3 p.m. or it's about 3 p.m. I haven't eaten anything. Very hungry, very hungry. All right, guys, so questions, questions. That would be good. It will give us something to do as we go to each next thing. I know, Telly, it's a bit noisy, but hopefully it's a lot better now that I'm moving away from the, from the music. Uh, I don't think that was jazz. I think that was classic rock. Because that's what you listen to when you go ice skating. All right, so around the corner here, we're on... 42nd Street, walking toward 5th Avenue. Around the corner here, we're going to find the front of the library. And uh, at the front of the library, we'll see some important statues that, well, I wouldn't say they're important. Let's say well-known statues that uh, uh, kind of make the, I the library iconic. The other thing inside the library... Oh crap, I just realized they might not let me in with my coffee. Oh no. I might have to go to the other place first. Oh, I forgot about the coffee rule. They have a rule about no coffee. And I just remembered that. Crap! Uh, we might have to go to the, the, the jungle in New York first and then come back to the library. Well anyway, one of the things that you'll often see in movies in a lot of movies is the New York Public Library reading room. It's this large room with many green lamps and uh, it's sort of a classic old looking room. Lolly, Lolly, throw away my coffee. I just spent $3. Now you're going to throw it away? Are you kidding me? No chance of that. That's not going to happen. I would never. I could never. No, we might just go somewhere else first and then come back to the library. All right, that's a possibility. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll look at the front of it at least. And yeah, maybe I'll try to go in. See what they say, see if they say, sorry, sir, you cannot bring a coffee in here. And if they say that, then I will go to the other place first, the jungle in Manhattan, and then we'll come back to the library. Okay. So what I'll say is, can I bring my coffee in? And the man at the door will say either, unfortunately not, or yes. Uh, Luke, are you going to answer some questions for us? Yes, that's my plan. But in order to answer questions, you need to ask them first. That's how it works. <laughs> you can't, I can't answer questions that don't exist, right? So. If you have questions about uh, culture, uh, New York, visiting New York, uh, pronunciation, grammar, uh, English vocabulary, phrases, idioms, phrasal verbs, uh, animals, bananas, ice cream, whatever kind of questions you have, I'm happy to talk about personal questions too. Do you have any questions about me? You want to ask? You want me to talk about? I'm happy to do that too. All right, so we're at the outside of the library now. Take a sip of coffee. You use words jinx, whammy, and hex. Yeah, I do actually. Uh, if, some, if something is jinxed, that means it's sort of like in a bad luck situation, right? Something happens and you say jinx, then it's related to luck and avoiding bad luck. And whammy, often, we use double whammy. A double whammy is when a second strong thing happens or a second bad thing happens. Uh, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Ooh, that's a double whammy. It's a double, two, two things that are 
big happen at the same time uh, or impactful in some way, right? Okay, here is the here is the lion. That's lion number one, well-known lion, in front of the library. This is the front of the library here, and there is lion number two. You can see that one over there. Okay, big lion, very big. I'm standing right next to it. It's quite majestic. So this is kind of the most iconic thing about the library. This big facade on the front and these lions. You can see some of the words there. It says uh, John Jacob Astor is a famous rich New Yorker who died uh, on the Titanic. Actually, did you guys know that? John Jacob Astor, the guy whose name is on the front of the library, died on the Titanic, on the boat, the Titanic. Uh, Lennox Library, founded by James Lennox. Okay, so those are the founders of the library. We've got another statue over here. Let's check that out. There's nothing worse than when your coffee spills onto your fingers as you're walking. Nothing worse than that. Uh, that is a statue of, I don't know who that is, but you can see that there's a net over it to protect little pieces from falling down. Let's see if they let me in. I don't think they will, but I'm going to try. Sorry. Blocking people's selfies. People are doing Instagram photo shoots, you know. Let's see what happens. Feeling. I've got a feeling. I'm not going to be able to get through. Just a feeling. <sighs> Am I allowed to bring my coffee in? No. Yeah, we don't do cups. No cups? Yeah. All right, well, I'll have to go out and drink it all then. Thank you. See, I told you. I told you. I don't know. Unless you want to dump it. Yeah. It is too expensive. For that, That's right? right, exactly. All right. That guy just agreed with me. He said, you have to drink the whole thing or dump it, as Lolly Lolly suggested. And uh, then he said, but it's too expensive for that. He knows. He knows. I mean, who wants to spend almost $4 on a cup of coffee and then just dump it out? You know? So what we're gonna do now is, it's windy outside? It's not windy at all. I'm not sure if you guys are getting good quality sound from my microphone. If you're saying it's windy, it's really not windy at all. Can you not hear me clearly? I'm worried about my my microphone quality and my speaker quality. That's not good. I'm gonna unplug it and plug it in again because I'm I'm concerned concerned about it. Uh, just as I was going in there, I might have missed a question. So let me scroll up here. Have I ever been here before? Yes, I've been to the library many times, many times. Uh. Let's see, I might have missed a question. What kind of statues are in the library? So, so the library is not really about statues. It's just part of the public library system. Anybody can go in, obviously, because it's a public library. That means that it's free. And it's more of a place to go and read and visit than it is a place to rent books. I mean, I suppose people do borrow books from this library, but that's not why I would go there. The inside is very ornate, and I, you're right, I can't get in with my drink. That's why I went out. They told me to leave. 
it's very very ornate, very classical, and so people often will just take their own things there, or work there, or just visit and walk around there. And uh, I don't know if they rent that actually borrow, but other public libraries people do that. Let's see what's happening here. Is it convenient to live in New York without a car? That's a good question. That is called a manhole cover. Come on, guy, we can do it. Oh, they're putting it back. Are they putting it back or taking it out? Very heavy. Yeah. Wow, very heavy. Success. So, the interesting thing, I can I can share a fact about manhole covers. We're going to be walking to Second Street, or, or Second Avenue, Forty Second Street and Second Avenue. We're going to find a jungle in the middle of the city, right? That's what we're going to do. Uh, as we walk along, we're going to pass two famous sites. We're going to we're going to pass Grand Central Station. And you know what? Maybe we can just go in very quickly because it is very interesting. And then we're going to pass the Chrysler Building, which uh, some of you may know as the Spider-Man Building because it's on the Eagle. Spider-Man is always standing on top of them. So then we'll try to go back to the library if we can, okay, and take a look inside. But honestly, the outside is more, it's more interesting than the inside, frankly. So the interesting thing about manholes manhole covers, which, are the, which those are, is that there's a reason they're round. They're round and rather, rather than square, because if it were square, you could drop it down through the hole, and someone below would, you saw how heavy that is, right, it would instantly be killed by it if someone were down there. But if it's round, if it's disc-shaped, there is no position that you could turn it to, there is no way to drop it through the hole. No matter what angle you hold it at, there's nothing you can do to make it fall down the hole. Unlike something that's square or triangular, you could, you could make square or triangular things drop into the hole, but that's impossible with a circular disc-shaped manhole cover. For that reason, that's why they are disc-shaped, so that people are not killed. <laughs> and that's, I think, pretty interesting. All right, so, now we're coming up on, I didn't even realize I was gonna cross these historic sites, but now we're coming up on the Grand Central Station, which is beautiful on the outside and the inside. This is, uh, it has a subway station underneath, but it's mostly a train station. I've actually taken a train from this station before, and on the inside, it's a, a huge tall building. Now you've probably seen it in many different videos and movies in the past. There are movies that have the big terminal of Grand Central Station inside, famous movies. I recently saw a couple days ago uh, the band BTS. If you, I don't know if you guys know BTS. BTS did a performance inside of the terminal of Grand Central Station. So we'll go there for a few minutes and look around. Uh, I don't know if you guys like BTS. They're a Korean a Korean uh, pop boy band, and I guess they allowed them to close down the central terminal of Grand Central for them to do that performance. But if you want to check it out, it's on uh, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. It's on the Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show YouTube page. All right, so we're gonna look at the outside first, and then we'll go in, and I can definitely, don't worry, bring my coffee inside Grand Central, because it's not a place like a library, it's like a public space where people are moving around and no one's standing at the door saying hey you can't take that in here all right so we're standing outside of it now let's turn the camera around shall we the thing about glasses is this wait oh now it's not fogging up hmm they fog up Okay. Untouchable, right. There's a movie called Untouchables, as Gertie mentioned. 
that happens here. If you watch Untouchables from the 90s, I think, maybe 1994 or something. All right, so here's the outside of Grand Central Station. Very interesting sort of, we would call this classic or classical design. Uh, kind of Roman in the, the, the collars, the, the columns there, the pillars, those are called, uh, I guess those are Corinthian style pillars, uh, which are from Rome, Roman style. Uh, and you can see on top there is a statue of a Greek god named Hermes who had a winged cap. He was the messenger god. He carried messages down to Hades and everywhere, and that's the Chrysler building there. Chrysler building is, if you see these one, two, three, four, five, all the way around are these eagles, these eagles, and if you watch Spider-Man, you'll often see that Spider-Man is standing on one of the eagles before he jumps down and starts, you know, swinging around. Uh, so yeah, that's the outside, and there, I don't know who that is, but it's not a, it's not a god, I can say that. All right, I think I can cross very quickly here. More eagles, more eagles. All right, so we're gonna go in, just take a look, because the main concourse, uh, the main hall is quite interesting, I think. Check that out. We're gonna check it out. Sound is okay, guys? Yes, steel eagles. Brass, I think they're brass, actually, not steel. Brass eagles. All right, so we'll go in here. Were you born and raised in New York City? No, I was not, actually. So, oh my God, those hot dogs are very good. Uh, I was actually born in Ohio and grew up in Ohio and spent the first 18 years of my life in Ohio. Then I moved to New York and uh, I only stayed in New York for a short time, uh, maybe 10 months, something like that. And then... I tr started traveling. I went to India. I went to uh, Asia, Thailand, uh, Korea, Japan. And I lived in China for four years, five years. Got married, then moved back to moved back to uh, the United States and thought, huh, New York is probably the most interesting city. And it really feels like a, a world city, right? It's kind of unique. So, all right, so here we are in the main concourse of Grand Central Station. This is huge. Look at it. Giant windows and these staircases on all sides. And there, on the other side, on the opposite side, is an Apple store. Now, there's also an interesting YouTube video here of a flash mob. That means many people show up here at one time and they all suddenly start dancing or they suddenly stop moving. It's a flash mob. That's where you buy tickets there. It's the ticket terminal or ticket booth. What do you think of coronavirus? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I'm feeling a little nervous about coronavirus right now. <laughs> I don't know if you saw there was someone with a mask. So yeah, I'm not, not super relaxed. Cool hairstyle. Wow, look at that. Interesting. Okay, so here is the Apple store. All right. No, so I've been living in New York now for four years. Here's a good view of the whole thing. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you see these, these are the constellations. There is uh, Pisces and this Taurus, the bull there, Taurus. And uh, Pisces is the two fish, right? What's that one? I don't know what that one is. Uh, there's another interesting thing here. There is a, oh, I got a better view here. Moving to the middle. We'll check out the Apple store for one second and then we'll leave. So you can buy tickets from here 
or here. And downstairs, if you go down there, is a very big place to eat, a big dining hall. Um, uh, the ceiling is all themed as you know ancient, ancient sort of Greece, I guess, or ancient Rome, whichever one. And then uh, this green ceiling, which is, I believe, original and hasn't been redone since it was built, or or was redone once. And then there's apparently there's an old tile, one of them that's remaining from when the, when the first original version. And I'm trying to spot it, but it's up there somewhere. I'll, I'll see if I can find it on the other side. I think it might be somewhere over there, because uh, I researched that once before. Okay, let's just look quickly at the Apple Store. By the way, guys, make sure you hit the uh, like button. would appreciate that. And uh, subscribe if you like. And uh, don't forget to check out my links in the description as well. Hey, okay, Apple Store in Grand Central Station. Oh, this is what I'm at. This is what I want. This is what I want. Protect myself from coronavirus. All right, very important. Let me put this. Let me put this down. I should have put this down first. My selfie stick has a tripod. Ha ha. Oh, too much, too much, too much, too much. My God, what is too much? I need to wipe my hands off. I'm just gonna wipe this off on my pants. Okay. So we're just gonna walk around for a second in the Apple store and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna Leave. I want to pass the ceiling though and see if that thing is still there. All right. Uh, why aren't people wearing masks yet? Yeah, nobody's. So I think the reason is there are no reported cases of coronavirus in New York City yet. No confirmed cases. So, you know, I think that might start changing soon. Once there are, start to be confirmed cases of coronavirus, people will start wearing masks. But at the moment, people are not really freaking out about it. And I don't think people are being too, you know, too cautious about it yet. But I think that could change. It really depends on, depends on the situation that, that happens, right? We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm very worried about it. But I'm not yet at a place where I'm wearing a mask every day. But I have a mask. I bought a mask. If you haven't seen my video about that, make sure you check that out. All right. Cases. This is a good microphone. I should get that one. That's a very good one. I want that. I want it. All right. It's just a regular Apple store. Nothing special. Nothing that amazing about it. Hope I don't fall downstairs. That'd be embarrassing. That'd be really embarrassing. Uh, this is the Genius Bar. I like how it's kind of open. You know, you can't really tell exactly when you're in the Apple Store and when you're not. Right? The lines are kind of blurred between not being in the Apple Store and being in the Apple Store. All right, here we go. Let's get out of here. Time to go to the next thing, because we have to get to the jungle. Yeah, you know what? I really want to go to Mexico City. That's one place I've always wanted to visit. I've heard it's really cool and getting more interesting all the time. So it's definitely on my list. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I've never even been to Mexico, which is even more sad. But I, I'll make it there eventually. I tend to, you know, for the during my 20s, I tended to travel more in Asia. I've only been to South America once. So I think in my 30s, I will probably spend a little more time traveling in Europe and traveling in South America, Central America. I think so. Well, I, I mean, I love Asia. I love travel in general, but I don't know. I just kind of focused on Asia mostly for my, my 20s, the years of my 20s. 
Where is that tile? Somewhere. Yeah, I'd love to go to France. Lolly Lolly, can we have a cup of coffee if I go to France? Huh, maybe they replaced it. It was supposed to be one darker tile. I'm not seeing it. Huh. All right, whatever. One last look. All right, there it is. Grand Central Station. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Oh, that is an air purifier. Oh, and here are the trains. See, this is one of the tracks. See? You see the train. Very different than the subway, right? The train is waiting to leave on the platform. And you can buy tickets from the machines there. Oh, thank you for welcoming me to the Dominican Republic. Guys, I'd like to visit everywhere. I want to go everywhere. But things are limited. You know, time is limited. Everyone, yeah, let's all meet meet Lolly Lolly in France someday. That's a good idea. This place boggles your mind. That's a good expression. Mind boggling. Yeah, I mean, the, the main concourse area is huge and it's very impressive. I tend to agree with you on that. All right, so we are leaving now. We are leaving, we are leaving, we are leaving. Lolly Lolly, what would you recommend we do? Actually, everyone, if we were to visit your city, you can just write this in the comments. If we were to visit your city, what would be the first thing that we should do once we're there? My, my answer is go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. That's my answer. If you come to New York City, the first thing you should do is go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The second thing you should do is eat at a pizza place called Danny's Pizza. Those are the two things. One food, one, uh, one food, one, not a tourist attraction, but a thing to do, right? All right, so for you, what is it in your city? What is one thing we should do? First thing we should do, what, but yeah, but what, we, what would we do there in Paris? The first thing to do, and then also something to eat. What should we eat? What's the best restaurant in Manhattan? I don't think that's a fair question, you know? I don't think you can say, because there are, it depends on what you like, and there are so many famous restaurants, so many restaurants that are delicious, that aren't, you know, five-star restaurants, but are still amazing. It's a very tough question to answer. I'm going to a very interesting place for early dinner, if you can call it that, called, uh, I believe it's called, just called hand roll sushi. I think that's the place. But it's a special type of sushi where they make it very fresh right in front of you. They roll the sushi, but they don't slice it like they would a normal roll of sushi. You grab it with your hand, dip it into the soy sauce, and eat it directly. So you use your hands only. And uh, it's actually very delicious. And all of the ingredients are fantastic. It's a homeless guy there. There are some, some homeless people. Well, I would say quite a few homeless people in, in the city. And some of them are homeless because they have no choice. Some of them are homeless by choice. Some of them are homeless because they're addicted to drugs. There are many different possible reasons. Where does your, uh, your accent come from, New York or Ohio? Uh, I like to think neither, and most people tell me neither, because, you know, I've been teaching English for eight years, and because of that, I've had to make my accent as neutral as possible, so that you, no one can hear exactly where I'm from. Uh, for example, my brothers, they notice that I speak differently from them, and I notice that they speak differently. They'll say something like um, college. Instead of college, they'll say college. Uh, yes, Danny's Pizza, D-A-N-I-S, is in Queens, near where I live, actually. It's amazing. 
Uh, so they pronounce things differently from me. I've, I've kind of changed the way that I speak over time just naturally to make it more neutral so that it's not New York, it's not Ohio, it's hopefully nothing. Uh, just so that people can, if they learn from me, they know that they're learning the most sort of middle pronunciation that there is, if that makes sense. You wouldn't feel comfortable eating sushi with your hands, huh? They haven't tried it yet. But the whole point of that place is to eat it with your hand. I know, it seems weird, and the first time I tried it, I thought, that's weird. I don't know about that. But then, I tried it, and uh, I liked it. I like it. I don't know what Florida's accent even is, I'm not sure. This is an Amazon Go store. Amazon Go is very cool because you just walk in and you don't have to pay for anything. It just automatically adds whatever you buy to your Amazon account and then you just walk out. So you walk in, just go in, automatically it recognizes who you are. You take whatever you want, take food, you take, see, just go in there, go in there, and you walk in, you grab stuff, grab drink, grab sandwich, and then you just leave. And then, five minutes later, you get a little notification on your Amazon app, and it says, you, you just bought a sandwich. <laughs> but the cameras recognize you. You don't even scan the sandwich or anything. You just, you can put it in your pocket. They scan, they just scan you. Anything else? <laughs> yeah, we lit right now. Manchester United is a place to be. Why? The treble. Do super shit, bro. Do you live stream? The place? Right yeah, now? yeah. Uh, whoever's watching. How many people are watching? Uh, 20. 20 like people. That? Not that many. Hello. 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 Uh, that is not the place to stay. You're staying in the wrong place. I think you realize that now, right? No. It's boring. It's great. There's nothing yeah, going on Wall Street. We've been like, chilling on Wall Street the whole time, bro. Yeah. We've been in Soho, East Village. Uh, Don't forget Brooklyn. to check out Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah Brooklyn is... Are you guys going to any live shows or anything? Uh, any any no, music we're going, shows? We're going to the garden tomorrow to see the Rockets. That's cool. Destroy the Knicks. <laughs> hope, let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, Broadway? You guys doing Broadway? Nah, no, not doing Broadway, man. Yeah. We got time for that. Yeah. I'm gonna come back in the summer, man. We yeah. all peace. Hey, peace thanks. Love, Have a good one. What's that coming? What's that coming? What's that coming, man? All the comments, bro. What, what, what comments? Lots of comments. Yeah, you got comments. See, too. I'm sorry, I didn't even understand what you said. Your try, accent. Try, 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 try. <laughs> what about the National History Museum? I ain't going there, bro. Dude. <laughs> no, 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 you should. Natural History Museum is amazing. That's where the National History Museum is called. It's oh, great. It is. Whereabouts is that? Uh, 8th Street on the east side of Central Park. <laughs> Metropolitan <laughs> Museum of Art is, is legit. It is oh, the best. Me Metropolitan Museum of Art is my favorite place right in the city. Yeah. Like, I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. I've lived here for six years. I've what never even been there. It's boring. Don't go there. But Metropolitan yeah. Museum of Art is the best place. Metropolitan. And you can pay whatever you want. If you pay 25 cents, yeah, yeah, just pay yeah. whatever. So, in fact, we're moving the plane for me that. Yeah. It's a time it that I don't know. You'll have to check. You guys are here for another couple of days. Probably yeah, like 6 p.m., something like that. Oh, yeah. Go to the Met tomorrow. That's Actually, you guys should do the Harlem shit tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or if you want to go to the mosque tonight. Go to the Met, guys. Funny. All right. Where is the Chrysler building? We're near it. We'll be right under the Chrysler building. Those guys are cool. So the guy, I don't know if you heard what he said. He's here for his birthday. And apparently not shy about just talking to whoever, which is cool. <laughs> uh, and he said they're staying on Wall Street, which I think is very strange because Wall Street is sort of the financial district, the financial area. Uh, and there's nothing to do. There's not that many great restaurants, enough, no shops to go shopping in. So I thought it was strange that they're staying in Wall Street, but whatever. Uh, and then uh, they're just kind of checking out the city for his birthday. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see if I miss anything. So the I don't know if you could hear. We're, it's kind of funny. We were just talking about accents, right? That guy 
had a, his accent is very strong, right? He had a sort of Liverpool British accent, and I have to listen carefully to catch everything he's saying. He was saying, "What's the comment? What's the comment? What's the comment?" I, 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 I didn't quite understand what he said, and then I realized he said, "What's the comment?" I think he saw something that maybe Lolly Lolly had said about the History Museum, and I, for the first two times he said it, I didn't understand what he said. That's interesting. So the yeah the Liverpool British accent is quite is known to be quite strong, um, and uh, also the, the the north, generally speaking, of of England is known to be quite strong. Sort of like how people say in the south of the United States, also the accent is quite strong. People talk like this. They have a southern accent. Everything they say tends to be drawn out slowly, so it's easy to hear, but you could say that it's quite a strong accent compared to what you normally hear on the news. That's the idea, right? Pfizer, this is where you get your medicine. Pfizer is a huge medical drug company, among other things. They do other things. This building is huge, huge medical technology company. I, and I don't know what else they do. Oh, we, we totally passed the Chrysler building. There it is, we're on the other side now. See that? We totally passed it. By the way, guys, don't forget, if you don't mind, hit the like button. I would appreciate that. Let's other people know that there's something going on. Also, uh, don't forget to subscribe and check out my courses in the links in the description. We are here. We're here. So we're here to see the jungle in Manhattan. Apparently, there is a jungle inside of one of these buildings. And I think we just arrived. We're at 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street. So if I go to 2nd and 43rd, we might be able to see this thing. I'm still drinking this coffee. It's getting cold, actually. Pfizer produces Viagra pills, among other things. <laughs> I mean, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. She's right. You heard of Pfizer? Yeah, they they like they like they produce Viagra and everything else. Where's the entrance to this building? Hey, can someone help me search here? The jungle in New York. The jungle in New York and then figure out where the entrance to the building is. Because I can't search on Google while I'm live streaming. So can someone Google this for me? Uh, should be 43rd Street and 2nd Avenue. There should be an entrance to a building. And I'm trying to figure out how to get in, because apparently there's a, there's a jungle here. I, I, I don't know where. Uh, employee entrance only. Huh. See this? That's an apartment building there. You want to buy? Do you want to buy an apartment there? Do you know how much that will cost? Probably $10 million, something like that. Uh, very expensive. Any, any house in Manhattan is gonna be between one and $30 million. Very expensive to buy a house here. I certainly couldn't afford to buy a house in Manhattan. Crazy expensive. But this building is pretty cool, right? This building is interesting, interesting shape. Uh, Luke, show the, show the cars, amazing. What, 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 what cars are amazing? I haven't seen any amazing cars. Do you want me to turn the camera around? Tired of looking at my stupid face? That's understandable. That's reasonable. I'm going to walk around this building until I find the public entrance. I'm pretty sure I'm at the right building. If one of you guys could help me out 
by, by Googling this, I would really appreciate it, seriously. And let me know in the comments how the heck I can, oh, it's a place that has my name. A restaurant, Luke's Lobster. Oh, it's nice. It looks nice. All right, I'm walking around this building back to Third Avenue. I'm gonna go around once more until I find where the thing is. Uh, did I go to college? Yes, I did. I went to a place called Miami University of Ohio. So I went to university in Ohio. I studied philosophy at, the, at Miami University of Ohio, which you might find to be slightly strange, but that's the fact. And it might be jungle adventure uh, or just jungle indoor uh, uh, Gertrude set, search indoor jungle try that indoor jungle and then search 43rd Street indoor jungle 43rd Street let's see if we can find it I think it's in this building that I'm walking around I really do but I can't find the public entrance all of these entrances are either shops that are, have nothing to do with that or they are you know private what the heck? See, there's a bank. There's an ATM. Uh, that's not where I want to be. Huh. Huh. Hmm. I was sure it was here. Seriously, guys, I need some help. I need help. I need your help. Maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe I go in here. Can I go in here? No, that looks very private. I don't think so. No, thank you for not... No, it's not there. There's a security gate. It's not public. Cool. Interesting. Ask a local. Ha! <laughs> no locals. These people are not locals. Oh, maybe here. We work? Uh, I guess I could. Oh, see, I'll try. I'll ask somebody who's in the building. Oh, the door is locked. The door is locked. <sighs> the heck. I just want to go in. I just want to go in. Nice restaurant. All I want to do is go in. Everything's closed here. Closed. Closed. <sighs> huh. All right. Guys, seriously, I need your help Googling. I really need your Google help. My walk-in closet. My double sink bathroom. Which is 209 building entrance is closed. For entry during non-business hours, please use the 235 building entrance. Closed as well. <sighs> what a disappointment. You guys could literally save the day if you find the answer on Google. You could literally save this live stream. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge disaster. And we'll never find, we'll never find where we're trying to go. Huh. It's closed today, Gertie? Is that what it says? I'm counting on you to give me this information. All right, I'm going to try to go into Pfizer, see if they can give me a job. Excuse me, do you need anyone to help you make medicine? <laughs> I'm going to ask someone if they know what's going on. If I can even get in, it seems like every single door is closed. Look, see? I mean, what, is this whole building just shut down? What is going on here? Pfizer is closed. A guy in there. There's a dude in there. Definitely a dude. All right, let's see if we. Maybe it's the next building. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm frustrated. Frustrated. Uh, I'm gonna see if it's the next building over. Guys, I don't know if we're gonna be able to go back to the library. But you know what? 
I know I said I would, but it's not that great. Okay. It's not that great, really. It's really not that great. Because the outside is the impressive thing, right? The outside of the building is the amazing thing. Inside is cool. A lot of marble. The reading room is interesting. But, I mean, I think we can get along without it. It's a long way back, and I want to head downtown after this because I need to get hand roll sushi, right? Nah, ha 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 Hmm, maybe that building over there. <sighs> All right, 801, 43rd. Been walking around this building twice now. So stupid. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe the building's closed today. I don't know. I don't know. I am going to just check this next building just to make sure. Just to see. I'm just going to check. Just going to check. Just to see. Now we're on 2nd Avenue, and this is uh, 43rd Street. Well, whatever that is, it's also closed. So, whatever. Uh, I don't know. All right, sorry guys. I'm gonna start walking. Start walking downtown to the sushi place. What a disappointment. What a sad, sad day. Horrible. <sighs> What's the difference between perhaps and maybe? That's a very good question. Uh, actually, there isn't a difference. That's a good question because you can use them usually in exactly the same situations in exactly the same ways. You can say, uh, perhaps it's closed today. Maybe it's closed today. Do you, do you think it's open today? Perhaps. Do you think it's closed today? Well, maybe. I mean, they're used in, in the same way. I think perhaps has a more formal feeling to it. If we say, perhaps I will, we sound not necessarily more educated or better educated. We might just sound a little bit more formal and maybe is very casual, very relaxed. Not that maybe is not, not formal, I mean, it can be used in every, every, every situation. So let's say that maybe it has a feeling of whatever. Use it whenever you want. And perhaps has a more like, hmm, sort of tone to it, right? That's the idea. Same meaning. Same meaning. Okay, now we're walking along 2nd Avenue down toward 28th Street. So 42nd Street. We need to walk more than 10 streets. And then we'll get to the Handrel Sushi place where my dear wife is waiting for me. Or she will be waiting for me. She's coming up to meet me there. That's the plan. That is the plan. Any other English questions, guys? Pronunciation questions? Me questions? Culture questions? New York questions? Uh, whatever questions, I'm happy to answer them. As we walk along, Second Avenue is pretty interesting. There's a lot of nice shops, flower stores, uh, places to eat, coffee shops, newspaper stands, all empty. I guess that makes sense, it's Sunday, right? No newspapers, apparently. After a couple of streets, I'm gonna cross over, and I need to I need to be at 28th and Fifth Avenue, I think. Anderson Duarte, invite me. Delicious. What? I'm going to sip a coffee, eat toast with Nutella. Yeah, Nutella is amazing. Some say that. Some say that Nutella was created by, by God as, as a dessert. 
it is really good, but it's it's very sweet. And I think if you eat too much of it, you'll probably get super fat. Lolly Lolly says, what's the pronunciation between W-A-N-T and W-O-N apostrophe T? Um, the difference is all in the vowel sound. The W sound is the same. The N sound is the same. The T sound is the same. And so the only difference is the vowel, which is A and O. A, O, A, O, A, O, right? So W-A-N-T is wa, a, want, 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 want. And W-O-N-T is wo. So there's an O, 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 A, A, O, O. Want, won't, want, won't, want, won't. So one goes up like this and one goes down like this. And that's really the difference, only in the vowel sound. Sure, no problem. The position of maybe and perhaps in the same sentence. Yes, generally speaking, uh, maybe and perhaps can go in the same position. Generally speaking, yes. Pizza place. I'm really hungry. I'm so hungry, guys. Ready? Super duper hungry. Um, what was I just going to say? Something about pronunciation? Oh, no, about Nutella. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys know the old Bible story about the world being created in six days. On um, the first day, there was light, and on the second day, there were, what was the second day? Creatures in the water. On the third day, the first thing that was created was Nutella. And then the other animals. And then humans, uh, well, man first, and then women were created after that. But the first thing was Nutella. Nutella came on the third day. It's that important, guys. And on the third day, God said, I've got nothing good to put on my toast except for strawberry jam and butter, and it's just okay. Therefore, I will create Nutella, the most delicious, spreadable thing to ever exist. Uh, and, then, and then it happened. Zap! Nutella was, was created. That's the story. Are there any advantage in living in New York? Anything cool? Uh, okay. That's an interesting question. So, let's say I were going to live in my hometown like the rest of my family, my brothers, my parents. Uh, let's say I were going to live there. Now, you, you could live near a city like Columbus, and of course there are opportunities, and you probably don't live in the city. You live near the city, and you drive 15 or 20 minutes, uh, 15 or 20 minutes into the city, and that's sort of the life you have. You commute, right? Lolly Lolly, do you think God's third creation is disgusting? I'm going to tell him you said that. That's not very nice. Uh, so, yeah, there is connectedness, there are opportunities, but the economy of jobs, the economy of socialization is still limited, right? Somewhat, somewhat limited. And so for that reason, I, I don't know, I, I prefer to live in a place that just feels so big and open that whatever you want or need is kind of just there, right? I've, I've never not been able to find what I'm looking for. For example, I'm in a book club right now, meeting weekly, to discuss a certain author's books. We only talk about books from that author. And it's not a popular author. It's an author that died a long time ago and not that famous. So I was able to find that. Do you think that would exist in a city of maybe 500,000 people? No, probably not. Definitely not. So you can find anything in New York. And someone asked earlier, is it easy to get around without a car? And the answer is yes, I, I, I don't own a car. I guess I could, I have a driver's license, but I choose not to because it's actually less convenient if you live in the city because you have to then think about parking, where to put your car, 
how to park your car when you decide to go somewhere. It's a constant struggle, a constant inconvenience. If you park your car on the street, then you have to move it once a week. Ah, it's just a major burden. So getting around by Uber, by subway, by bus is very easy in New York. It's not ridiculously expensive and um, I think it's fine. I have a bicycle too, I sometimes ride that, but generally I can get everywhere I, I need to go. Uh, and I live in Queens, I don't live in Manhattan. I can get everywhere I need to go by subway and uh, uh, so can my wife who works on Wall Street. Okay, so that's con pretty convenient. So there's convenience, there is uh, anything you want to find, right? If you're looking for a book club or socialization or a small group of friends who likes to play board games I mean whatever it's kind of all there then there's the diversity factor so I don't know if it's because I've traveled a lot or whatever reason I really like uh, uh, different kinds of things right especially when it comes to culture I don't like to live in a place that's like my hometown 99.9% .9 white Christians. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just kind of boring to only have that, right? My hometown is 2,000 people. Everybody is white. Everybody is a Christian. Everybody thinks the same thing. It's, I mean, whatever, it's fine, but not that interesting, <laughs> I guess, to only have that. But New York is, and especially Queens, is the most diverse place in the entire world. The, the borough of Queens is the most diverse area on the planet Earth. So I will walk 20 blocks that way, Korean town. 20 blocks that way, Chinese area. 20 blocks that way, Russian area, the Russian Jewish area. 20 blocks that way, uh, Co Colombia neighborhood, India, uh, everywhere in the world is within reach. And it's not like a fake Chinatown or like a fake Korean area or like a fake Indian area. The people from that part of the world live there. Other people do too. I mean, it's mixed. My neighborhood has a lot of, uh, a lot of Eastern European Jewish people and a lot of uh, people from China. My neighborhood is mostly mostly that. Uh, but just the fact that I can walk down the street and experience a different culture and eat local food from somewhere else in the world is one of my favorite things, especially in Queens. I mean, on, on Monday I eat Mexican food and Tuesday I eat Thai food, Wednesday I eat, I eat uh, maybe Korean food and Thursday I might have Chinese food and Friday I might have Japanese food, you know, every day. I get to eat something different. I get to experience something different. If I go for a walk, I'll hear 20 different lang languages being spoken, right? From different neighborhoods. That feeling, and I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but that feeling is great. I like it. I like that diversity and uh, uniqueness. I think it's very interesting, and that's the place where that's the place where you know, real people are. And sometimes I like to go to the, uh, the Thai Buddhist temple. And there's a Thai Buddhist temple in, near my neighborhood. Sometimes I like to go to the uh, Catholic church. Sometimes I like to go to the Hindu temple. So also the religious part, I'm not religious. I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I enjoy experiencing the cultural aspect of religion. I, for, I, I find it very interesting. So that's kind of the experience of, of living in New York. A lot of people say, yeah, but it's cold in the winter. Yeah, but the subway is dirty. Yeah, but rent is expensive. Well, yeah, all of those things are true. Personally, I like cold weather. I love winter. It's my favorite season, probably. Uh, Yes, it's true, the subway is, is dirty and it's old. That's a fact, that's a problem, I agree. And uh, it's expensive, that's also true. I mean, generally speaking, food is not that much more expensive, but all right, rent is a little more expensive. I pay 
$2,000 per month for my rent. That's kind of expensive, I guess, but you know, that's every, everything has a trade-off. If I lived in Ohio and I paid $600 for rent every month, then I would live, unfortunately, in Ohio. <laughs> There's nothing terrible about Ohio, but it's sort of like I wouldn't have those things that I like about New York. So sometimes you have to just evaluate what's worth it to you. What kind of life do you want to have? What's important to you? Some people like quieter, quieter life and maybe, you know, I'm 31 years old now. I like to be in a very active, dynamic place. But maybe when I'm 50, I won't. And then I'll move somewhere else. You know, I, I, I like Colorado. It's in the mountains, it's quiet, right? It's, uh, the air is fresh. That you're far away from your neighbors. And maybe that's what I want when I'm, when I'm 50. But now, I like this. I like the mess. I like the activity. I like, I like it all. So that is my reason for living here. And uh, I don't mind saying it as many times as I need to. So, good question. Lolly Lolly, you're not religious, but you like places of worship. Yeah, so do I. I love, love places of worship. Very interesting. Can I say, in this case, Queens is a cosmopolitan area? Yeah, you could say that. You could say all of New York is very cosmopolitan. Absolutely. Queens has a lot of Colombians. Absolutely. And luckily, a lot of Colombian food. So uh, I went to a place called, uh, a city called Medellin, which is in Colombia. And I stayed there for 10 days and I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. And then after I came back, I hadn't really eaten much Colombian food, but after I came back from uh, Medellin, by the way, if you haven't, guys, I have a video about a coffee tour that I did in Medellin. So you can check that out. It's in my, in my videos. Uh, uh, maybe a year ago, almost, something like that. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yes. So after I got back from uh, from Medellin, I wanted to eat, I wanted to eat uh, chorizo or I wanted to eat rice and beans. I had the hunger for that sort of thing. So now I found, actually in my neighborhood, five minutes from my house, a fantastic, very authentic, it tastes exactly like the food in Colombia. The people who run it are from Colombia. In my neighborhood, great Colombian food with rice and beans and uh, uh, chorizo and all that stuff, amazing. So, that's cool. That's cool. All right, we're at 31st Street, so we're actually getting pretty close to the hand-rolled sushi place. Uh, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes away maybe? We're getting pretty close, pretty close. Do you guys see anything else you wanna look at or notice that I'm not pointing at? Feel free, I'm gonna turn the camera around for a second. Uh, we're on 31st Street, 3rd Avenue. I think I need to walk down that way. I'm going to go one more street, and then I'm going to turn right, I guess. Oh, that looks good. Hummus Kitchen. Mmm. That looks, that looks very good. I love hummus. Maybe I should eat there instead of hand rolled sushi. Wow, that looks amazing. Wow, wow. If you guys want to just see you of a normal restaurant, this is not a super fancy restaurant. Just the prices at a normal restaurant. So, uh, a normal dish, $26, $26, $24. Hummus with pita, $16, $16, $17. You know, the prices of food in Manhattan a little more expensive than Queens salads, $16, $15. So, generally speaking, if you want to go to a restaurant, yeah, it is a bit more expensive than, uh, than other boroughs and other cities as well. What? Hold on, let me, my wife is messaging me. Almost at 28th, hold on, I'm texting, 28th and 5th. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> it's cool that I can do a live stream and actually text at the same time. The notification pops up and I can send a quick text message. I have to communicate with my, 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 my wife. She gets very impatient with me if I'm late. <laughs> She's a very demanding lady, which is good. All right. Well, guys, since I'm almost there, Oh, there's a crazy long line at the Handworld Sushi Place. Okay, uh, hold on, okay. Come to 30th, sorry guys, 30th and Lexington. Okay, send that. She can come meet me here. Oh, wait, 30th is here. I go left. Well, we're going to finish yeah, up in, in a minute, guys. So, oh, we're in K Town. One more message, guys. One more message. Okay, K Town. K Town. K Town is Korean town. K Town. I know you guys don't want to see this, but. Gotta do it! Now, there's another famous building there. We will actually. So we're going to finish in maybe five minutes. So if you guys have any other questions to ask, let's ask them in the next couple minutes uh, and I will answer them. Uh, we can see the peak of the Empire State Building there. If you see that there, that is another famous building. We'll get closer, but that is at 34th Street and 5th, 6th Avenue, 5th Avenue, 5th Avenue. Yeah. Lexington? Eh, I don't know. Uh, and no more. Okay, just text, texting. Okay, all right. No more messages. You you can you want to see my wife? Okay, sure. I'll I'll stream until we meet the shroom. So uh, that building is famous for being in a movie, and the movie that it's in is. King Kong. So there's a modern version that came out in maybe 2010, maybe 2011, I don't know. And then the original version, which came out in the 1930s, maybe it was 1934 or something like that, af just after the Empire State Building had been built. That building has been there since the 1920s. Start with, I think it started in the 1920s uh, and finished in the 19. 30s and uh, it has a famous needle there's a kind of an interesting story about it the other building with the Eagles that we saw earlier that one and the Empire State Building which we're gonna see in a second they were in a competition with each other right and they were gonna there were separate companies building it they were competing who's gonna be the taller one at this time there weren't skyscrapers these were the first skyscrapers in the world, some of the first skyscrapers, because skyscrapers are very tall buildings, right? 1920s, there weren't. This is a new, new invention, and they were suddenly building these huge, tall buildings. It was a, a modern marvel, you know? People really thought, this is, oh, this, is the, this is the future, you know? So they were competing to see which building would be taller, and it was in the news, everyone was talking about it, and it looked like the Chrysler building, the one that has the eagles, the Spider-Man building near Grand Central was gonna win. This one won. And it looked because it looked like the Empire State Building was finished. But then on the last day, they raised that that you saw the needle at the top of the building. They raised that needle up through the floor. They raised it up. They didn't know it was actually inside the building. And then they raised it up to the top and it beat the Chrysler building by a few a few feet or a few meters and uh, it was a big story. I don't remember it because uh, that was probably 80 years before I was born but <laughs> I can imagine the excitement. I can imagine that. It's a good story. Someone follows me on Instagram. Oh cool thanks. 
Yeah, I'm not very active on Instagram, unfortunately. I'd like to be. So this year is kind of crazy. So this year I'm trying to put out nine new English language learning courses. Now, I don't know if you guys realize how much work that is, but you know, so right now I have 11 courses. 11 courses on Udemy and Skillshare. You can check those out in the links. Uh, some of those courses are as little as three hours. Some of them are up to 15 hours long. Uh, some of you are taking them, I think. So I appreciate those of you who are. Um, but the level of planning and work that goes into making a course is honestly, it's insane. Uh, you have to carefully plan every single lesson, make sure that th th there's a flow between the lessons, there's a structure so people feel when they're going through the course, everything makes sense, everything is building on top of the next thing. You know, it's not like making a YouTube video. It's much harder. I mean, I work hard on my YouTube videos too, obviously, but this is a very big undertaking. And so I finished 11 of these courses and I'm quite proud of them, but I had this crazy idea that I would plan nine courses together and film nine courses in a row. And it's turning out to be extremely difficult. I've got a course on English grammar that's coming out, a course on writing, a course on teaching English. Uh, and so it's very intense and it's uh, somewhat uh, stressful and this year has turned out to be a very tough, intense, crazy year. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it at the same time. It is a big challenge, especially doing nine courses. So I'm writing all the nine courses. I'm filming all the nine courses. Then I have to edit all the nine courses. The plan is to have nine or ten more courses out by the end of the year on these different uh, different topics, especially topics that people have requested most. And so I hope you guys can keep an eye out for those. Uh, just know that if you see a lot of courses coming out at the same time or close to the same time, like one month followed by another month, don't say to yourself, oh, that must mean that Luke is being lazy and just putting out courses very quickly. No, I'm planning these courses for many months, filming for many months, and it just happens to be that because I built them all together uh, in sequence that they're coming out fairly close together. That's the reason. So hopefully, uh, hopefully people enjoy them. I really hope so. By the way, guys, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe and check out the courses that are finished so that uh, if you're interested in, you know, improving your pronunciation or working on other English language skills, like how to think in English, you can have a serious way to do that. A rat just walked in front of me. It was the size of a cat. Rats here are huge and delicious. The restaurant uh, not far away that serves rat. Very delicious. All right, we're getting very close, guys. We're going to K-Town. Now, K-Town is a, uh, an area. It's actually just one street, 32nd Street in Manhattan that uh, has a lot of Korean restaurants, and they're very good. A lot of them are very, very good. So that's where we're heading. Uh, that's where, apparently, the plan has changed. That's where I'll be eating. So I said I was going to eat hand-rolled sushi. I'm not. The reason is I got a message from my wife saying that the line in front of the hand-rolled sushi place is very, very long. So that means we have to find somewhere else to eat. So we're going to meet in K-Town, have some Korean food, which I cannot complain about because I like Korean food. I think Korean food is great. I think the courses of Luke are great. It's worth it. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying so. I hope people think that. The reviews are pretty good. So I think my review average is one of the highest, if not the highest, of any of the English teachers on Udemy. 
uh, and Skillshare, I think. And I think my average right now is 4.6 out of five stars, which is not so easy to do. So I'm quite proud of that. And I'm proud of the fact that people seem to really enjoy, enjoy the courses and you know, learn a lot from them. All right, now we're coming to, ah, yes, here we are. We're here. Let's take a quick look at the Empire State Building from under it, and then I'll go. Oh, what is an underdog? Right. So an underdog is someone who is not expected to be the winner. Everyone thinks that the other person is stronger. The other person, the opponent or the person against them, is the one who's more likely to be successful. And the underdog is someone who either successfully beats the favorite or the person who's stronger, or at least they're for a time, for a while, considered less powerful. And so people might root for them or hope that the underdog wins because, you know, people, people have sympathy for the, uh, people have sympathy for the, the one who seems like they can't win or seems like they're in a weaker position but the weaker person is often the one who gets people's support. Yeah, you can do it. Don't give up. Even though you're in a situation where, you know, it looks like you're not as strong as others, I think you can be successful. I think you can, you know, achieve something or beat the favorite, beat the person who everyone else thinks will win. So that's the person who is in that position is the underdog. And we talk about the underdog in terms of competitions, like a boxing match, something like that. We can also talk about the underdog in terms of uh, oops, oops. in terms of just the general general characteristics. Oh, you're usually the underdog. I'm usually in situations. I'm usually the one that people don't think will be successful, but in fact, <laughs> because I'm so hardworking, maybe I often do. Well, people at least hope that I do. Right? We usually say the underdog. All right, we're now under. So today we've seen New York Public Library, we've seen Grand Central Station, the Chrysler Building, now Empire State Building, which is famous for King Kong. One thing we didn't see, unfortunately, is the jungle inside the city. I might have to change the title of this video afterward just because of because of the fact that we didn't make it. Because we couldn't get in the building. Because everything seems closed. Well, maybe we can do it in the future. But before we do that, I'm going to have to you know, check it. Make sure it's okay. There we go. This building is almost 100 years old. Isn't that crazy? Almost 100 years ago, they were building it. And you see that needle on top there. That needle is that thing that they raised through the middle to uh, in, you know, in their race to be a, the higher building, that's the thing that put them over the top. Over the top means the thing that gave them the final advantage. Pizza. Pizza is famous in New York. A lot of pizza places. In New York, you don't buy a whole pizza. You ever see everybody in there? They're not eating a whole pizza. They're getting a pizza by the slice. Pizza by the slice. That's how it works. All right, now we're really under it. You can see King Kong? All right. Well, you might want to get your eyes checked. Gertie, are you doing drugs? I don't see any huge monkeys up there. All right. This next street, I think, is 32nd Street. That's Korea, Koreatown. That's where Mushroom will be. We've walked really far today. Let's see how many steps we've got. How many steps? All right. Who th who thinks that, who thinks, who wants to guess how many steps I've gone? Basically my first steps were when I started the live stream, honestly. I hadn't really walked until we started. But how many steps do you think we've got today? I've got it on my watch. Who wants to guess? Rolfie, maybe we can talk again or study or chat. Yeah, you guys have a place where you chat or a group chat or something? Uh, that would be cool. If there's a group chat where everyone can talk and discuss. Uh, okay, yeah, here's Koreatown. Yeah. This is it. This is it. Yeah, you're, you're pretty close. 
You guessed 10,000 steps. We are at, and this thing is always a little behind, 8,000. We are at 8,078 steps. Well, I actually think it's probably more than that because, um, you know, because it's always a little behind. So it's usually 10 minutes behind. So it's probably it's closer to 10,000. See, guys, here is a place where someone homeless will sleep. There's their food. Hello? Who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm right here. Where are you? You're in the gate of the. You're in the gate of the. Um, the oh, you mean the, the. You mean the. Not the supermarket. The supermarket or the place with all the little restaurants? No, not that one. The supermarket. The supermarket. Okay. Um, I will be there in. I will be there in two minutes. Mushroom, what? Why don't you come to the place, the the place with the uh, all the small shops? Okay, is that okay? Yeah, I'm there because I'm there right now, Mushroom. I'm right in front of there. Yeah. All right. So let's, hey, Mushroom. Let's meet first, and then we can t talk about it. Okay, so meet me in front of the uh, meet me in front of the place with all the small shops, and then we can go somewhere else. But that's let's meet there. All right. All right, she's coming to meet me. So I'll let you guys see mushroom, and then we're gonna stop for today. Thanks for joining, guys. I appreciate it. I really do. Run, Luke, run. <laughs> Wait a second. Someone knows the Star Wars references. Star Wars. Run, Luke, run. Classic. Here comes Mushroom. Hey, Mushroom. Wanna say hi? This is Mushroom. Oh, wait. This is Mushroom. Hey, Mushroom. How long have you been waiting? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Hit like, subscribe, check out the links, and uh, talk to you guys soon.